Hello and welcome to my F1 23 Lamborghini My Team Career Mode. Here today for part 60 for the Japanese Grand Prix. We're back in Japan after I had a season off last season. But the last time we were here, we had a very dramatic Grand Prix. So we're hoping that this one will be the same. This is a grid though for the Grand Prix. It's Bottas and Paul alongside Carlos Sainz. We have B3, then it's George Russell, Hamilton and Pochair, Leclerc and Esteban Ocon, Lando Norris and Liam Lawson round out the top 10. Then it's Joe and Oscar Piastri, Gasly and Lance Stroll, Verstappen and Sonoda, Hauger and Alex Albon, Fittipaldi and Logan Sargent, and it's an all hours final row headed by Nick De Vries. So we're here on the grid then ahead of the Grand Prix. We're going to be doing Doing an easy one stopper like we always seem to do on this game soft to the mediums and there's no rain expected like there was last time out in Singapore it's meant to be sunshine at the entire Grand Prix this is our qualifying lap though we found a second compared to our first lap we're hoping though to have a better result than we did last time where we had that big crash on DNF'd but let's go then, it's the five red lights, they're out and they're racing in Japan and Valtteri Bottas is on a shot clock from pole position. George Russell is taking the lead, we're up into P2, we have to lift off because of Bottas. Science is now P3, Pichero is up to P4, Bottas has gone from pole down to P5 as we go through the S section now. And we try and get close to George Russell, it's going to be hard though with the turbulent air coming through here. But we're going to try and get as close as we can to our former championship rival from a couple of seasons ago. Has it really turned out like that this season? As we go through the two degners, now underneath the track, as now we head towards the Kobayashi hairpin. As we go into the hairpin, we've gone a bit deep, and Carlos Sainz is having a look up the inside of us, but he's too far back to do anything there. This is a replay though of the start, so you can see Bottas has been absolutely nowhere and got mugged by the top four, absolutely swallowed up and Red Bull not really been that good this season, that's a big blow for him. This is our point of view, so we got a good start and then had to completely lift off to avoid hitting the back of Bottas and really turn sharply to the left, which it's hurt us there, it means we'll be free. This is George's start, absolute mate, nailed it from P4 and now into the lead. And hopefully, we can get after George and win this Grand Prix. Coming on though, to the end of the first lap, on to lap two, we're getting closer and closer to the back of that Mercedes. We're going to go to the inside, we're going to try and go to the outside. George places his car beautifully in the middle of the track and gives us no way to get past. On to lap 5 now when George started to pull away and we fell back into Carlos Sainz. We always seem to end up battling Sainz at the minute. So I just thought about it at the inside too far back. We battled him for the lead in Monza. We battled him for the lowest end of the points last time out in Singapore and we're battling him today for P2. Now this is Science getting closer and closer on to lap 7 now we are. Science gets his nose ahead. We're going to try and keep it to the outside. We'll put a wheel on the grass. Science covers us off and Science is past and there's nothing we can do about that. That is a great move and Science also decided to pull away. The softs not really doing it for us as to be approached the middle part of the Grand Prix. Down the inside, Pater, who we made contact with in Singapore and then had that front wing damage and fell like a stone. He's overtaken us there and Bottas now has been stuck behind the Aston Martin. Can't find a way through. This could be a very different race for Bottas if it wasn't for the start. But now we've stuck with Pater as now we head down the pit straight. We're getting closer and closer. We've got a DRS, we've got the overtake button, we're going to sweep around the outside really pinch him onto the apex of the corner and we're back on the podium places lap 12 now and this is going to be the lap we decide to pit for our medium compound tyres they were starting to go off the softs George disappeared at the road Science 
disappeared up the road and we were just left defending the Aston Martin. You can see there behind us the Ferrari of Sainz was just coming out of his pit box as we were coming down the pit lane. He's gone through then onto the mediums and where did we come out? Another the team found us a nice little gap to come out to. As we head down now out of the pit straight there is Leclerc in the background the other Ferrari only just beating out the other Ferrari and now science ahead hopefully we can pull away from Leclerc I believe he's boxed and get after the other Ferrari and that's exactly what we did but we were stuck in a round two second gap you can see here with two seconds up the road from Leclerc and we're two seconds beyond Carlos Sainz and we were just slowly eating away at Sainz's gap and we're getting closer and closer and going on to the final lap we were just inside the DRS but we just couldn't get close enough to have a go it's similar to Monza a couple of races ago where we were right on the back of him just couldn't get close enough going into turn one we're just too far back and that could well be our final opportunity but now as we head up towards the hairpin are we going to go for it no we're still too far back but if we can get a good exit here we could have a go into spoon but george russell he hooked up the start it was a great start and they say the race isn't won at the first corner but it has been for him today he wins the japanese grand prix but who is going to finish p2 science has a big a gap we're getting closer and closer to him as we head towards 130R. We've got one more opportunity going into the head, going into the chicane, the final two corners. We're going to try and go for it. We're too far back. Science hangs on. We're all over the curb. Can we get the exit? We've had a big time slapper, but Science is going to take the and we have to settle for P3. They've done it then. Here at Suzuka, a brilliant win on the beloved figure of eight circuit. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs, and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy, and to stay out of trouble. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everyone played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. So George Russell then wins the Japanese Grand Prix. It's back-to-back -back wins for Mercedes now after Lewis Hamilton won last time out at Singapore. Carlos Sainz, one more lap, one more lap. And I guarantee we would have had him for P2. But Sainz P2 then, we are P3. We also got the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. But started P3, finished P3. Doesn't really tell you the story of the Grand Prix, really. Piastri then finishing in P12. Us finishing P3. He needs to sort this out. I thought Singapore could have been a turning point when he finished P5. But it doesn't look to have been. Down at the back, though, there was no retirements in the Grand Prix. Which is very rare. It was the two halves then. Nick De Vries finishing stone dead last. In terms of the championship, then, we now regain the gap in the championship it was 31 points coming into this race it's now 37 and also george closes the gap on his teammate as well in the championship and Max Verstappen, only a couple of races ago, he was ahead of both Mercedes, coming off the back of his podium in Monza. But he slipped down now and is fair way behind the two Mercedes. Piastri is still P9, only 62 points on the board for him. And then, as I seem to say in every video, there's still three drivers still at the score in Nick De Vries, Kevin Magnussen and Logan 
Sergeant. So in terms of the constructors then and another good weekend for Mercedes meaning the gap now is 50 points. That's a big margin to overturn at this stage of the season. Even a 1-2 for us next time out at Mexico would it be enough to overtake Mercedes. I mean the chance of a 1-2 happening everywhere anyway next time out with Piastri's performance is very slim. So the constructors may well be wrapped up for Mercedes is the turning point definitely seems to be that race in Paul Ricard where they got that one two and we didn't score a single point but still four races to go and anything can happen and Haas still the only team still yet to score this season but that's been then your Japanese Grand Prix not the best of races in the end one more lap and we would have Carlos Sainz I am a hundred percent confident in that but it wasn't to be we go though to mexico next time out and i'll see you then goodbye